I recently bought a IKEA Ennerby Bluetooth speaker to go on top of the kitchen cupboard. It was very well reviewed and I'd hoped that I could just put it out of reach and play music on it. The problem is that it goes to sleep after a few minutes of inactivity and even if you wake it up by pressing the button, the volume level comes on by default far too low. What I needed was a way to turn it on and turn the volume up remotely, so it was time to open it up and see what could be done. The speaker itself is pretty easy to get into. On the back there are some little grommets you pull off, and then there are ten screws. There are screws all the way around the edge, and then there are two screws hidden in the 8mm screw threads that are on the back. Once you get it open it's really well made. There's a board specifically for the power button volume knob, and it's got labelled test points for all the things that we're interested in. On the other side, everything's connected by a resistor, so we can put our own signals on the test points without worrying about shorting anything out. To make it wireless, all I'm going to do is wire on a Esprino MDBT42 breakout board to all of the test point connections. There's already ground and 3.3 volts provided, so we can just wire directly onto the board without worrying about anything else. After adding a bit of hot glue to hold everything securely in place, we're ready to put it back together and try it out. Okay, so we now have the Esprino module wired into the speaker. The speaker's powered on, and we're connected to the module via Bluetooth. I've got this bit of code which gives names to all the pins that are connected inside the speaker itself. And we have watches set on these, so that when the pins change state, it will print uh, the current state of them to the console. So, if I um, press the button, we'll see the power button goes false, then it goes true, and then the power LED turns off because we've just turned the speaker off. If I rotate the volume control, we'll see that it turns in a very repeatable manner. Um, V1 always goes false first, then V2, then V1 goes true, then V2 goes true. So, when you're turning it clockwise, V1 is the one that always changes first. If I turn it the other way, it's the opposite. V2 is the one that changes first. So this is a completely standard rotary encoder pattern and is how the mic controller in the speaker is figuring out how this knob is turned. Because of the circuit design in here, there's a uh, one kilo ohm resistor from each of those pins, V1 and V2, and even the power pin, to the microcontroller. And we're connected to the other side of those with Esprino. So we can quite happily override exactly what those pins are without risking shorting anything out. So we can quite happily fake a volume knob turning or being, being turned on and off. So if I now um, add some new code to this, um, we've put the pattern, the way that these um, uh, volume pins change here. And uh, if I add these functions, so we now have a press power button, and what this does is it um, writes zero to the power button, but then it reads from the power button a little while later, which is effectively letting it return to its normal value, so Esprino is no longer forcing it. Um, if I do turn on, it looks at the power LED, and it decides whether or not it needs to um, press the power button or not. Same with turn off. Now set volume is a bit more complicated because we're actually looking in this pattern array to see where in the pattern we are. And then we move the knob four times and we see whether um, dir can be a value um, sort of negative to positive. And if you make it, say, four, it will go through this whole process four times. So it'll be as if you turn the knob four times as far as you would do normally. So if I upload this code, um, unfortunately, I can't easily show you how the volume um, thing is taking effect here, but what I can do is say turn on. Oops. And we'll see that it's happening there. And uh, I can also say turn off. And it's off. So, yeah, this is obviously quite nice. And at this point, we can actually just save everything directly to the uh, board in here and we could then send the JavaScript commands that we wanted to it over the UART interface. But in order to make it a little bit more secure, I'm actually just going to expose a Bluetooth service and I'm going to turn off the UART capability on it. Okay, so what we have here is um, code that does exactly that. 
when the board boots up, it waits 30 seconds. And this is so that we've got a grace period so that if we ever need to reconnect to this speaker with the web IDE, we can do that. But after the 30 seconds, it will run set services and set advertising, which will turn off the UART interface here, which will mean that the web IDE can no longer be connected. So when I leave this in the house, no one random can go and reprogram it. We've got a completely random service and a characteristic that matches it. So just these 16 bits have changed here. It's writable and when it's written, we look at the data that's written. If it's zero, we turn off. If it's one, we turn on and we turn the volume up a bit higher because by default the volume's way too low. And if it's two, we turn the volume up. If it's three, we turn the volume down. So this is all nice and easy. If I upload this code now, and when it's done, if I save it, Okay, so what I have here is an app called NRF Connect. If I connect to the speaker, we should see that it's got a service, which is the one that we created. It's got a characteristic, which is the one we created. And we can write that characteristic. So if I press this button and I write the value 1 to it, it will now turn the... Um, the speaker on and adjust the volume as well. Uh, if I were to write two or three to that, it would change the volume, but again, we can't see. But if I write zero to it, it will turn it off. So we now have a remote control speaker. The next thing to do is just to, um, to write the code for the puck, which will then control this, because we don't necessarily want to have to connect with our mobile phone all the time. It'd be much better to have a device that we can just tap Right, so now we have a puck here and we're connected to the puck and this is our code. So we have um, an NRF request device which uh, will find a device called IKEA speaker. Um, we're flashing the lights on and off just so that we have a bit of a, um, an idea what's going on here. So now it's found the device, it'll try to connect to it and then it'll try and get the service and the characteristic which are the ones that we defined previously. And when it's got them, it'll write the value and then it'll disconnect when that's done. And finally, it'll flash the green LED once. It'll flash red twice if there's any kind of problem. So we watch the button. And if the button's pressed a short period of time, so um, less than a second, we turn it on. But if it's pressed a long time, then we turn it off. And here, just um, in on init, we basically um, put the whole thing to sleep. So we... Um, we make sure there aren't any services so it's not programmable, we make sure it's not connectable and that it doesn't show its name and then everything goes to sleep. So this is now uploaded. If I press this button once, it finds it, it flashes green to show it's okay and then it turns on. So now if I long press it, so over half a second, it'll flash, it'll go green and it'll turn off. Um, and so that's basically the whole thing done. The only thing left to do is to say save. And um, that will save all of this code to the board. And it stopped right there because the second it's finished writing and rebooted, it's now turned off Bluetooth and disconnected itself. So we now have a working remote controlled speaker for the kitchen. If you like this, uh, please subscribe on YouTube and also check out desperino.com where there are loads of tutorials and examples of doing fun things like this in JavaScript with Esprino. Thanks for watching.